What's up everyone? Welcome back to Tactics Testing. So this is the Yori Tactic. All right, it's absolutely incredible if you was um, part of FM21, part of the Discord, or if you're seeing this tactic about, you know it was absolutely incredible. So we've updated it. Victor Hugo had a look, had a tweak, had a play. And we've got here a Yori 4-2-3-1 asymmetric tactic for Football Manager 22. So hopefully it does fantastic and stay tuned for the video. Right then, welcome back. So before we begin, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment as well if you are using this. All right, let us know how you are getting on. And uh, if you want to download it, the link is in the description. All right, there will be a link that will send you to SI forums, and there will also be a link where you can go to my Discord um, and find it there as well. So yeah, the team's taking part, guys. Milan, Salonatana. <laughs> If I'm saying that right. Red and Wigan, Colchester, Augsburg, Dortmund, RC Lens, PSG, Norwich, Aston Villa. And also Manchester United. A lot of teams, a lot of tests. Hopefully they all do absolutely fantastic. If you can't download, don't worry about it. Because we're just about to go through all of the instructions right now, guys. So, advanced forward instructions. Inside forward, let all wait. Mark specific position. There's a cheeky one there. Uh, you're marking the defender centre right. Okay, inside forward left. Mark specific again. Uh, that's the defender right. Inside forward right. Mark specific. That will be the defender left, guys. Then we've got the shadow striker. Also marking a specific player, which is the defender center left. So he's going to be pushed up a little bit more because he's going to be marking a center back. Um, central midfielder. Not marking anyone this time, so that's all right. Deep line playmaker. Mark specific. All right, that'll be the AMC. Wing back left. No mark specific. Wing back right. Ball playing defender left, ball playing defender right. And the sweeper keeper, set piece instructions, corners, defending right and left. And attacking left and right. And that is aiming for the near post for the corner taker. And then free kicks, defending right, left, attacking left and right. And then attacking left, small chance to shot, or attacking right and then left. Um, wide, attacking left and right. And then deep free kicks, attacking right and left. And then throw-ins, guys, defending right, left, and attacking left, and right. And that's just uh, mixed right there. Back to the tactic then. So positive mentality, guys. In possession, very narrow on the, on the attack and width. Uh, play out defense, short passing, higher tempo, low crosses and work ball into box. In transition, counter press and counter, where your goalkeeper distributing quickly to your fullbacks. And then out of possession, uh, you are using a much higher line of engagement, using the offside trap. A standard defensive line, standard defensive width, and much more often on the trigger press and a prevent short goalkeeper distribution. So there's the tactic. You got all the teams. Hopefully it does fantastic. And I'll see you at the end of the season so we can have a look at all the squads and how they finished. So let's get started then in the Premier League. And as you can see, with Manu, Aston Villa, and Norwich, all teams finished above expectations. All right, Manu won the league. They came first. Uh, they came six points ahead of Liverpool. All right, first place. Aston Villa came a few places above expectations uh, by coming sixth with 65 points. Norwich ended up beating the drop and also finishing in a European qualification place on seventh place right there. So, yeah, that's not bad, is it? Not bad at all. If we go to the player stats, top threes, all right, goals, Ronaldo, of course, with 39 league goals. Fernandez just behind him. All right, the shadow striker, that was Fernandez. Nice, 27 goals, absolutely insane. Probably the best performer on here, all right? Um, and Puki for Norwich got 26 goals. Average ratings, Fernandez, 8.22. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> um, then Ronaldo coming third, 7.78 assists. Fernandez 29, Sancho for Man U 20, and Buendia uh, 17 for Aston Villa. Player of the matches, Fernandez and Ronaldo. Clean sheets, David De Gea against 17 right there. So, yeah, Man U had an absolute field day with this tactic. Fernandez as a shadow striker was, yeah, was too good. <laughs> very, very good. We can have a look at his full numbers in just a second. Uh, but first, we'll go through Manu's competitions. All right, so they didn't win anything apart from the league. So that's a shame, but cup, cup competitions can be a little bit random when it comes to tactics test. So we'll go straight to the squad. Best player was obviously Fernandez, who got 36 goals and 40 assists in all competitions. That's balmy. That is balmy. What a guy. All right. 
Biggest goal scorers, Ronaldo got 50, Fernandez, Greenwood got 23, Pogba 18, All right, Sancho got 14, Varane 11, centre back, decent set pieces right there. Um, biggest creators, Fernandez 40, Sancho got 26, and Greenwood, Ronaldo, Pogba, and uh, Wambasaka all getting double digits as well. Data Hub. All right, so not looking too bad on the general performance. All right, we're pretty much exceeding in everything apart from pass completion when it comes to the averages. Uh, team attacking again as well. Look at look at it, look at it. We are the Blues. If you didn't want, if you didn't know. All right, so we're getting we're getting fouled a lot, which you would do if you're attacking. Um, skillful, you're forcing them to foul you. You're getting a lot of goals, expected goals, a lot of shots, a lot of dribbles as well. And obviously, with the team defending, all right, we're conceding just under a goal per game. Expected goals should be less, to be fair. Uh, getting a lot of tackles in, and uh, we're winning quite a few tackles as well. So, yeah, pretty good. All right, if we go to the full numbers, Man U scored 176 goals, and we only let in 53 in all competitions. But in the league, ladies and gents, that was um, second best. All right, so we only conceded. 35, which was the second best in the league. 131 scored, which was the greatest of them all. <laughs> so, yeah, Manu did really, really well. Uh, Aston Villa, obviously coming sixth, is pretty good in itself. Got a couple of players in the... Um, well, got one player, should I say, in the top threes. Did they win any competitions? Quarter final in the FA Cup, Liverpool. And then fourth round, Man City knocked them out of the Carabao Cup. So, we'll go straight to the squad then. Best player was Leon Bailey, 10 goals, 9 assists for him, 7.17, biggest goal scorers. Uh, Danny Ings getting 24, nice one. Watkins getting 14, biggest creators, only one player, Buendia, right, getting 17 assists. So if we go straight to their full numbers, 94 goals, 63 conceded. Um, in the actual league, right, that was the 8th best when it comes to conceding. We conceded 55 in the league, but 79 goals scored, which was the 3rd best team in the league, everyone. All right, Data Hub. Again, that's not too bad for a team like Villa. You are still on par with the averages everywhere. Right? I, would, I would say everywhere as well. And But apart from the uh, tackles, one ratio, goals and expected goals, you're a little bit better. A nice one. Awesome. Not bad, Aston Villa. Not bad. Uh, Norwich, underdogs. They beat the drop by miles. <laughs> All right, they came second and qualified for the EC2, which is... Yeah, not bad, Norwich. Not bad at all. Uh, competitions then. So, FA Cup, they got knocked out of the fifth round by Villa. Uh, Carabao Cup, fourth round by Arsenal. Go straight to the squad. Best player. All right, 7.28 was... Uh, I was saying that Pierre Lise Melu. Am I saying that right? Never heard of him before. Uh, seven goals, 14 assists. Biggest goal scorers were obviously Puki with 29. Biggest creators was Lees, Malou, Dao, and Rashika, 10, 11, and 14. Data Hub, we'll go back first, four numbers, 85 goals, 75 conceded. Yeah. It's a lot, but you are underdogs. You got to remember that. All right, because if we actually go to the league, all right, 70 scored, which is the sixth best team in the league, scoring-wise, 68 conceded, that's the fifth worst. So you're not the worst, it's the fifth worst, it's... It's forgivable for, for a team like um, Norwich because of your quality and everything else. So, yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at the end of it. Um, Daytop, you can see here, a little bit worse off than Villa, but still all right in some areas um, for the general performance. Team attacking, they're not doing too bad. And uh, team defending. All right, so we're conceding a little bit more than we should normally compared to the averages, but that's expected for who you are. Expected goals is also low, but we are we are getting a decent amount of tackles in or attempted tackles, uh, but we are winning seventy nine percent of them. So that's not bad actually for a team like Norwich. Premier League, not bad results. All right, all three teams did excellent. PSG, RC, Lens, and in League One. More like it, all right? PSG are always going to win. We just like seeing big numbers. And uh, they actually went unbeaten. They didn't lose a game and only drew once, all right? 122 goal difference with 112 points. RC Lens came fourth. RC Lens are predicted roughly 15. All right, so you, can, you pretty much count them as underdogs. And uh, yeah, by finishing fourth, that's excellent. And they, they weren't far away. They literally could have just won one game. One game. And they could have come second. That's mad. Um, unfortunately, 
no players from either team got into the top when it comes to goals because obviously Mbappe was used on the wing more often. He wasn't used as a striker. Still scored quite a bit, but just not that many in the league. Um, average ratings, though, you got Neymar, Messi, and Danzo, all from uh, RC Lens and PSG. Assist, Kaku to get an 18. Uh, player of the matches, second and third for Messi and Klaus, or Klaus. Klaus? Is it Klaus? Seven and six. And clean sheets, Donnarumma getting 20 right there. So PSG's competitions did the win out. They won the French Cup, and they also won the Trophist as champions. So let's go straight to the squad then. Look how many players. Look how many players getting all those ratings. Messi being your best player. 27 goals, 17 assists. And uh, biggest goal scorers then, you got Cardi, 32. Mbappe got 28. Messi got 27. Rafinha, Ramos, centre-back, 12. Wijnaldum got 12. Oh, so, yeah, done, uh, done fairly well, really, to be fair. Messi, Rafinha, Di Maria, Mbappe all getting top on the assists as well. 12, 13, 14, and 17. And this report, full numbers was 186 goals scored, 29 conceded. So, in the league, that was 138 scored. And only conceded 16, guys. Not bad. <laughs> no matter who you are, that's not bad. Uh, so, now it's one. Day tub. It's the old general um, domination for PSG right there. No point looking too, too much into it because it just means they won in every category, basically. Apart from pass completion and normally possession-wise, they normally don't do as great. Still decent, but not as great. Uh, so, yeah. Nice one, PSG. All right, we'll go to RC Lens again. They did absolutely incredible coming fourth, guys. They came fourth. All right, if we go to the home, um, 74 goals scored. It was the third best. 44 goals conceded, which was the fourth best. So they did good there. Competitions, they didn't win anything, but did get to the semi-final. Yeah, you can't moan. Can't moan at RC Lens. They, they all did fairly well. Dortmund, Augsburg, all right? Dortmund came first. Augsburg, underdogs, came fourth. Got Champions League football. Haaland got 45 goals. Haaland was insane. Yeah, he was the best player in the uh, in the Bundesliga, but he normally is. All right, very good. Haaland, in all competitions, scored 56 goals. Uh, did anyone who won? All right, German Super Cup. I um, won, that's a shame. And Pokal Cup, uh, Leipzig ended up winning it. So, yeah, they didn't win anything, but uh, Dortmund did well. Augsburg also did well. If we go to Italy with Milan and Salonitana, um, how did they do? Milan ended up finishing top. All right, so not too bad there. Uh, Salona Tarna, they are the underdogs. They're predicted bottom. All right, remember that. They're predicted bottom. And they came 10th. Not bad going at all. If we go to the lower leagues of England, all right, Reading in the championship. Uh, unfortunately, just missed out in the playoffs, coming 7th. Um, go down another league to Wigan. Came first, got promoted. Then we go down another league to Colchester, who did get promoted via the playoffs. So, yeah, not a bad tactic at all um obviously when you play a tactic not simulated tactic it can do a lot better because you can adapt it a little bit uh, every game you can just slow it down speed it up go more direct go shorter just use your use your footballing knowledge if you need to score a goal you go more attacking if you need to defend you go more cautious so on and so forth waste time and you'll do a lot better but yeah, this tactic was really good. It was the Yori 4-2-3-1 by Victor Hugo, guys. Hopefully, it does incredible for you. And um, yeah, and I'll see you in the future. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And I'm Tucker Jobs. Bye.